Hello and welcome to another episode of Ken Training. Today's training is going to be on compressor burnout. We've got a four ton split AC system and the, uh, there was no cooling. Troubleshooting the unit we found that the compressor was grounded. Now once it was determined that the compressor was grounded the next thought that is running through my mind is did the, uh, did the uh, compressor and the refrigerant experience an electrical burnout so you need to test the refrigerant so the way that we tested the refrigerant was with this kit right here and it's just called uh, quick check and then these are this is a brand new one right here what it looks like and what happens is is that you just put it in like onto the Schrader valve for two seconds to allow it to flow and then once when you do that if it changes color like this then you know that you have acid in your system because this is an acid test so this is what they look like new over here and then this one right here is our system so we know that we have acid in the system so once we determined that we had acid in the system we at that point know that um, okay so we know the compressor is bad the compressor is grounded cut that out of the system we can replace the compressor but I'm not going to just sit there and take out the old compressor and throw in a new compressor because I've got acid that has circulated inside of the components of the system so I purchased this product right here which is uh, go ahead and do a zoom in on this RX 11 flush starter kit because this is actually my first burnout and electrical burnout that I want to clean the system out in and this kit here which comes with a one pound can of the RX 11 flush uh, a nozzle so that you can shoot the product uh, a small hose um, and also a valve where you can attach your hose onto right there it's got a little built-in safety valve that goes on top of your can and, uh, and this kit here cost me let's see the uh, starter kit hold on where is it oh, there it is hundred and twelve dollars so this starter kit was hundred and twelve dollars I also bought this, which is a two pound can of the RX 11 flush, and that two pound can cost me about $100. So this is just, this is $200 right here. Now, in addition to that, I also purchased this here, which is uh, RX Acid Scavenger, which was, hold on, $24. So I got this and we're going to pour, since my compressor is completely out of the system, I'm going to pour a little bit of this uh, product here. This looks like this. It comes with a little nozzle and it, uh, it's just a cap and there's oil in here. So here's, you can see the brand new tin on it. So this one's never been opened and there's just oil in there. Now it says that this one here will treat this two fluid, two fluid ounces treats up to one gallon of compressor oil. And they have a sheet in here so that you can do an actual, um, tells you how many cans of this product you use to make to see if you're using two, you know, depending upon how large your system is. So I got a four ton system and the guys at the supply house said that the original compressor oil was 64 fluid ounces. There's 128 fluid ounces in one gallon. This treats 128 fluid ounces. So basically, I'll, I could, if I wanted to, the directions say I could pour the whole two ounces in there and be done with it. But, you know, if I was a little concerned about um, how much uh, dilution of regular oil is going on those lubricating parts, I might not want to pour the whole thing in. So maybe I'll just do half of this because I am going to clean out the entire system with. RX11 flush. So I do plan on using these two these products here. So I, I wanted to show you the products that we're dealing with and um, 
uh, in a quiet office environment before we go down to where the equipment is actually located. Other pieces of equipment are going to be on, so it's going to be loud and dark in the sections in which we're working in, but we'll try to show you everything. But basically, what I've got, let me just show you here on the board. What I've got is I've got the evaporator coil, and then I've got the condenser coil, so we'll just say C-O-N-D, and we'll call this one the EVA, EVAP, the evaporator coil. And then you got the line sets going to and fro. My distance between these units here is about 110 feet. We'll call it 110 feet. And also, and then, uh, and then I've got the components that are here. Now, obviously, where the condenser is, well, that's where your compressor is located there. But that's out of the system. So I'm going to actually flush this in three stages. What I'm going to do is I'm going to flush out the suction line, the discharge line, and then flush out the evaporator separately and the condenser separately. And I'll sh when we show you the components, I'll show you how to do that. Also, I'll, what I'll also do is give you a link in this video to uh, RX11's uh, link on how they say on how to use it. But basically what they want you to do is when, you, when you're using this, and you're connecting onto that pipe and you're trying to flush that pipe out because you're going to do one pipe at a time. So what you're going to basically do is they want you to create some type of a restriction at the end of the pipe. Now in the video that they do, what they do is they physically crimp the pipe down and that is how they create their restriction and then that goes into a bucket with like a white rag so they, you can kind of determine um, what's what that looks like. I've got a 110 foot distance so we're gonna have to do this in two-man teams. So one guy is up here, he's spraying the product, another guy is down there checking out that bucket to kind of see what it looks like and what's coming out of the system because you can determine by the color of the product, the RX-11, that's coming out is how you're going to determine how clean your system is. Do I need to keep flushing the system out? Now, uh, this RX-11 flush, it has a very low temperature boiling point. It's like 106 degrees Fahrenheit. But basically, what they want you to do is they want you to shoot it into the pipe, get a, a reasonable amount of liquid. Now, they, they, give, you a, um, they give you a chart. Uh, it's not really a chart, but they give you instructions that says, okay, for up to half-inch pipe, give it, I believe, it's a 30-second blast. I don't have it memorized but it's something like that. So, so I've got 110 feet. If it was a 30 second blast on a half inch pipe, I've got two pipes here. One is actually 5 eighths and the other one is 7 eighths of an inch. And, and then they, they have you know, the, the time that you want to, in order to flush that out. But um, this is my first time working with this product so I gotta kinda gauge one, one, I called up their tech support and I told them about, you know, the products that I purchased. Basically, he told me on my two pound can, he goes, use one pound of this product and, and flush out your evaporator and then use one pound and flush out your condenser. And I asked him, I said, well, should I, should I flush in a little bit and then go ahead and blow it out with the nitrogen and then do that a couple times. And he goes, no, he goes, you want to get a good amount of this product in, because this boils off rather quickly, in liquid format, and then, because that will collect the acid and help it get pushed out. So basically what he wanted me to do was to, to pump into my components, like, like the evaporator as an example, pump in one pound of the RX-11 flush, then switch over to nitrogen, use the same thing, just go ahead and put nitrogen on there and then blow that out. And then hopefully you will have scavengered everything. <clears throat> In an evaporator that can, be some, that can be somewhat tough to do to try to get it because of the nuances of all the piping and, and the way the distribution tubes work. And that is why I am taking the, the extra step and putting in this RX acid scavenger which is more of a neutralizer so if indeed I don't get everything with the RX 11 flush if there is still some acid in the system this will be in the compressor oil and it will neutralize any remaining acids and of course we're doing a compressor change out that means we're going to put in a new filter dryer 
uh, as standard operating procedure anyways. And go through the full-blown leak check and uh, full-blown evacuation. On this one, we'll actually do an evacuation with our vac pump overnight because I just want to give it a really good vacuum uh, on this system. And I've got it open right now, and so it's, so it's uh, going to be open for some, some time, and i still got to flush it out. So I'm going to make sure that we give it a very good vacuum uh, before we uh, charge uh, the refrigerant. Oh, another thing about the refrigerant. So the refrigerant that I took out, well, that's contaminated refrigerant. Obviously, uh, if you're not familiar with compressor burnout refrigerant, that refrigerant is not going back into the system. Uh, that refrigerant is currently in my DOT tank, and that can go to the supply house, and I'll do a tank exchange for 60 bucks, because uh, my, my DOT is, is a 50-pound tank, so uh, I can do, like, I think it's for $60, do a, uh, do a tank exchange. Well, they'll take the refrigerant, give it to a... Uh, company that can uh, either reclaim it or destroy it uh, properly and I'll get myself back a, uh, uh, a vacuumed out uh, 50 pound DOT tank. Uh, so that's it for now. Uh, the next step will be uh, out in the field and then uh, on the next video. Alright, so here is my evaporator. It's completely aluminum.
going to do, we're at the condenser. Now we're going to show you what, uh, what it looks like on this end. Come on down here. This is the uh, liquid line that goes towards the evaporator. I crimped it down with a pair of uh, lineman's pliers here. I'll show them to you. With, these, with this tool here, a pair of lineman's pliers. So I just crimp that down, and then I tried to turn it down this way so it's facing into this, this uh, catch pan right here. And then we're gonna flush this one out. So we're gonna just put the RX-11 flush in, and then put the nitrogen behind it. This here is a suction line. What we're gonna do is we're gonna uh, take this cap off and restrict that service valve down, and then see this catch pan? We're gonna move this to inside of here, like that. So we're gonna flush out this way, restrict at this valve, and then flush into that catch pan right there so we can see what's going on to get everything out of there. So basically, this is gonna be a, too difficult to video in live motion. I'm just trying to show you the steps involved that we're gonna take um, to do it. But um, we're gonna go ahead and do that right now. Okay, right here you can see where we, when we blew out, we restricted this service valve here. We, normally this valve here, which is a service valve, is usually back seated all the way up this way. So what I did was, was I drove it in with this Allen wrench all the way down to tighten, and then I backed out on it two full turns, which um, actually we put a pressure gauge in here, and it only came up to like 20 PSI, so we could have actually just backed it out one full turn it would have been okay to come up a little bit higher on that pressure. But in any regards, we blew out this line, which again is like 100 feet, the large diameter suction line, came up, came up here, and that's how much material we took out of that pipe. And pretty much, that really should be like oil because the material that I'm dealing with, the RX-11 flush has a very low boiling point, it should have just evaporated out into the atmosphere. So it's in the, the, judging by how much I'm seeing in the system, I'm probably gonna end up adding all two ounces of the, um, of the uh, oxygen, uh, excuse me, the acid scavenger, the acid, the acid scavenger, because you know there's so much piping in this system. Now, our next step is to work on this condenser. So we're right here at the condenser and this is where we originally cut the pipe to, uh, to, to put the, um, the compressor. So we're gonna actually blow in to the pipe right here. That's where we're gonna blow into. And then it's gonna come out right, uh, right here out of, the, uh, out of the condenser through this valve. Now I'm gonna do the same thing on the, the, to this valve that I did to this valve. I'm gonna remove the cap, I'm going to drive it down and I'm going to back it out one full turn. Uh, this one I did two, but only one was necessary. And then I'll take an inline pressure gauge, put it over here so I can monitor what pressure I got in the system. And we've already cut out the filter dryer. It's gone. This is where the filter dryer came from. So we're going to take our bucket, another bucket, we're going to put it under here just to collect all that stuff. So that's where we're at right okay. now. Okay. My RX-11 flush is good to go. I got my gun ready to go, so all I have to do is to press the trigger. I have a bucket underneath here, so I can collect whatever comes out. And I'm gonna now put the RX-11 flush here, and I'm gonna just try to support that pipe a little bit. Hang on. Okay, because I want to put a little pressure on that. And I'm, I got about, this can, is about halfway full. And I'm gonna to try to do this whole condenser in one shot. So I'm gonna to try to get most of this can in here right now. And here we go. Get this ready. Okay, it's going in the system now. Nothing is coming out yet. I'm just waiting. I'm, I can hear it going through the system. And it's getting cold on my hand, too. Still nothing. I can tell the tank has still got plenty of stuff in it. 
I can hear it coming out the outlet here. I don't know if you're picking that up on the camera, but I can actually hear it coming out. Oh, I got a pressure gauge here, and there's no pressure on the system. It's showing zero there. I got to keep my hands here to keep a little tension on that. Still nothing. Oh, wait a minute. It started shooting out at me when I released the pressure there. So it's good I'm wearing this eye protection. A little bit shot out at me and hit me in the face just now. Plus I got some uh, gloves on, some latex gloves on. All right, that's a pretty good shot. Most of the can should be empty. I'm gonna see if I can get ready to switch. All right, so I'm gonna leave this, what I'll do is I'm gonna leave that tension on there. Hang on. I gotta back the screw out of the valve on the uh, RX-11. Take off the manifold hose. Bring that over to my nitrogen. Connect that onto here. It takes a little far away to get a little closer. All right, connect that on. Open up my tank. Okay, that's fantastic. I got over 150 pounds here. Here we go. in order to get that good tension. And I'm building up pretty good pressure in the system. But I'm not getting anything out. Just a bunch of vapor. Keep blowing that to try to get some more out, but basically that's all. That's that's what it is. I got the pressure up to like 40 psi with just trying to hold this down with my hand. But um, so basically, I'm just going to do this again. Uh, do this again to try to blow out some more nitrogen down there. But pretty much, this is my last component with the RX11 flush. I already flushed out the two line sets, the suction and uh, liquid line. And I already flushed out the evaporator. I'm at my last piece of equipment, which is the condenser. Once we get done with this, I can put the, uh, the acid scavenger in the compressor. I'll show you that step. And then we can uh, start uh, putting all of our components, our new compressor, our uh, filter dryer, weld everything back together, raise it, and then leak check it, and then, uh, and then go from there. Okay, so now we are at the compressor. This is a scroll compressor. Scroll compressors like this have a check valve internal right here, not allowing the refrigerant to flow or anything to flow from here uh, back down uh, into this way. This is the suction side of the compressor right here, the larger diameter. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the compressor, I'm going to tilt it back like this, and I'm going to empty the two ounces of oil Hang on a second here. Okay. I'm just going to keep shooting it in like this. And just uh, let it pour down. And we're going we're gonna to let this compressor sit for a, at least 24 hours, which is going to give the oil time to settle out to the, to the sump, which is exactly what we want it to do. But um, once we get done with this step, hang on one second, we're almost done. Okay. 
So now that that's in there, I'm going to sit that back up. Okay. And it comes with these plugs. I can go ahead and put that plug on there for now if I can get back in there. And just let that sit until we're ready to uh, put our stuff on it. And it came with this plug here too. Okay, okay that's going to conclude this video. Basically this video is on using the product RX11 Flush and dealing with compressors that have experienced a, a burnout, an electrical burnout how to test it, which you saw with that quick check. Uh, then we know that we had a contaminated system. The refrigerant that comes out cannot be reused. I gotta uh, do a tank exchange with that at the, at, the, at the supply house. What else? Then you saw the RX11 flush, which was, uh, first I started at the evaporator, then I cleaned out the, uh, the two line sets, the uh, liquid line and the suction line from the condenser to the evaporator. Then I, changed, then I cleaned out the condenser as best we could. Uh, and then I decided to go ahead and use the whole two ounces. Uh, after what I saw came out of the, the, the suction line set, all that material, I decided uh, why don't I go ahead and use the whole two ounces. The directions say that it's okay to do that. I was uh, just a little concerned about adding too much. Uh, but uh, after I saw that, I feel pretty confident that we're perfectly fine. And then since this, the compressor is not even installed in the system, the, I used the acid scavenger that came in the uh, liquid format rather than the aerosol format. So this way I could just pour it right in the compressor because I have access to it. If I did not know how to seal the system and I wanted to add some of that um, oxygen, uh, excuse me, the acid, acid scavenger, I could have done so. Uh, you just have to buy a different container, put it into the suction side, of your system and then let it circulate out that way. Uh, but I didn't uh, purchase that because uh, my system is open. But uh, right now we're gonna go ahead and uh, put, the, put all the components back in because uh, pretty much I've done everything I can in order to deal with electrical burnout as, as possibly I can. And hopefully I'll get a good service life out of this new compressor. So that's it, I wanna thank you for watching. Check out my YouTube channel which is Ken Training and we'll see you later.